Hello, it's so glad, so good to have you join us again for another adventure in God's awesome word. Before we get into the message, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you today. We thank you for who you are. You're God all by yourself. You are God from everlasting to everlasting. There is no time that you are not. You always was, you are, and you always will be. And we glorify your name and bless your name. And Lord, we look to you that you would open the eyes of our revelation knowledge to know your truth and your truth alone. I humbly, as I always do, ask for you to anoint these lips of clay that I will be an oracle of your word and of your will to these your people. Open eyes, let us know you, Lord, so that we might walk upright before you and trust you with all of our hearts. We ask this in your G in Jesus' sweet name, your precious name, Lord. Amen. As you can see, the subject of the message is the God you can trust. The God you can trust. It will be coming to you from Psalms 18. And we're beginning at the first verse to the chief musician, a Psalm of David. David was one who trusted in the Lord and he set the example for us that we could trust in the Lord. And the Lord never let him down. And I can say in my 50 plus years of ministry, that God has never, ever failed me. He's never let me down. I've failed him, as I've shared on many occasions. I've failed him, but he's never failed me. Paul tells Timothy along the same point to let us know that God is faithful. And he goes as far as to say that even when we're not faithful, God cannot deny himself. He cannot deny who he is. He is the faithful one. And matter of fact, the Lord Jesus on his thigh is written, true and faithful, or faithful and true. Um, but it says to the chief musician, the Psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this Psalm, in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Too many people will recognize that God is God and that he is um, almighty. They recognize that he has the power over life and death. And they'll even recognize that he has the power over their lives. However, the question is not who God is in the sense of him being sovereign and being God. The question is not in God's power and ability to do things. But the question is, do you trust him? And to ultimately trust him means that you must love him. Without, uh, there is no love without trust. For you to have true love, there has to be a certain amount of trust. So you cannot truly love God if you don't trust God. You can't. Matter of fact, even to the extent, to some extent rather, that God uh, loves us, he also trusts us. And you say, well, how can God trust us? Because he loves us. And what he trusts is not you in and of yourself, but he trusts what he has placed in you. That image of him that he has placed in you and that he is fashioning you after the image of his dear son, Jesus Christ. God trusts that to come to fruition and God will be successful. 
Paul tells Timothy, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows those that are his. So God knows those that are his, and he knows those who are not his, in the sense of those that are not going to be saved. He knows them already. He knew them before the foundation of the world, and yet he still reached out to them. He still gave them that opportunity, even though he knew what their choices were going to be. And he gave you the opportunity, even though he knew what your choices are going to be. He already knows when you're going to fail. He already knows when you're going to be unfaithful. He already knows when you're going to make mistakes and bad choices and all. But he also knows when you're going to repent and when you're going to turn to him and cry out to him. He already knows that. Matter of fact, in Isaiah, he says, before you call, I'll answer you, and I'll hear you while you're yet speaking. That's the God you can trust. <laughs> in verse 2, he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation in my high tower. Now, this is describing positions of protection, positions that you want to have that will protect you from the onslaught of your enemies. And God is that tower. If you get in God, get in Jesus, get in the presence of God, that's where your protection is. That's where your deliverance is. That's where your um, overcoming power resides, is in the presence of God. David said in the 16th Psalms, in thy presence is fullness of joy, at thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. When you get in the presence of God, you're safe. There is no sickness in the presence of God. There is no death in the presence of God. There is no defeat or disasters or chaos in the presence of God. The reason that we experience in the we start experiencing these things is because we're not in his presence. We don't seek to be in his presence. We seek, to, we seek for to be in our presence, or we seek to be in the presence of others, but not the presence of God. But if we were to give ourselves to be in the presence of God, we would know the peace of God. We would know the joy of God. We would know the blessings of God. We will know the mercy of God. We will know the grace of God. And we will know the deliverance of God. We will know the healing of God. And we will know the salvation of God. He's my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, my God, whom my strength in whom I will trust. The scripture tells us over in... Uh, Acts the first chapter, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That power is dunamos. That's red. That, that's uh, the, the word there is dunamos. You're going to receive power. You're going to receive the, the explosive power to be able to overcome anything that would come against you. But then we look at John the first chapter. And those that believed on him, as many as received the Lord Jesus Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And so the Lord is my strength. He's my power. He is my deliverer in whom I will trust. I will trust. Not that I have trust, but trusted, but I will. It's a continual trust. I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation. The horn of my salvation, that means the uh, residual of power, the, the uh, basis of power, uh, the, and the authority of power, and my high tower as a place that I can go and be protected. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. Praise brings the presence of God. And I've shared so often that the word panium, the Hebrew word for presence, is also the same word used for face. So when you 
have the presence of God, you have the face of God. And praise brings God's presence. Praise brings God's face turned toward you. Uh, the scripture tells us that uh, God uh, inhabits the praises of Israel. So if Israel is not praising, if the church is not praising, you don't have his presence manifested. Now he's with us always, even to the end of the world, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. But his manifestation of that presence comes when we manifest praise of his name, and we manifest praise of his glory. We manifest praise of blessing that name and lifting it up and calling upon the name. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Paul says in Romans, the 10th chapter, shall not be ashamed. It says, the sorrows of death, verse 4, compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. There's not a one of us that have uh, not been in a position where we had fear. Uh, we might not be afraid of a particular person here or there, but there are some situations in our lives that fear has cropped up and we, because we were unsure how things were going to turn out. And so as a result of that, uh, fear crept in. But he is saying to us that uh, even though the sorrows of death compassed me, they surrounded me, and none of us want to be surrounded by our enemies, but they surrounded me. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The overwhelming force of folk that didn't like me, and not only didn't like me, but they didn't like God, and they didn't re uh, recognize God. They didn't uh, fear God. They did not worship God. They did not serve God. Uh, but it made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. It hindered me, stopped me in my tracks. But in my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God, the God that you can trust. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him, even unto his ears. I like the way the Lord Jesus said at the tomb of Lazarus when he was praying, he says, Father, uh, I thank you that you hear me always. He says, but I'm saying this for those that are around me so that they will know that you sent me. God always hears the cry in the voice of his people. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. When you start calling on the Lord, out of a pure heart. You start calling on the Lord, asking for his deliverance and seeking him uh, for his help. Uh, you're going to initiate uh, some things that's going to shake things up. God will come and shake things up. As uh, we often say, God will do you something when you trust in the Lord and seek his face. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. The scripture says, our God, the God you can trust is a consuming fire. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. We look at the time that Elijah stood against the the, uh, the prophets of Baal, over, nine, over 800 of them, uh, 850 of them. He stood against them. He was the only one that was standing for the Lord at, on Mount Carmel. But we see that when he cried upon the Lord, he prayed and asked God and the, and the fire of the Lord, because he, they, had, they had made the statement that the God who answered by fire, they would be God. Well, Baal couldn't answer. And they went through all the rigmarole and everything of cutting themselves and, and going through all of these rituals and stuff and nothing happened. But Elijah came and repaired the altar of the Lord. And then he had them bring 12 barrels of water and soaked the altar and the sacrifice, soaked it around, had dug a moat around it and, and filled up the moat and, and soaked the, the, the sacrifice so that there would be no question that this was not 
if the fire would come, it wouldn't be coming from Elisha. And so as he began to pray, before he could finish his prayer, before he could get to amen, the fire from heaven, from God, fell and licked up the water. God has a fire that will burn water. God has a fire that will burn up your lust. God has a fire that will burn up your sins. God has a fire that will burn up your sicknesses and your disease. God has a fire that will burn up your sorrows. God has a fire that will bring joy in the midst of your sorrows, peace in the midst of chaos. God has a fire that will set you on fire and will inspire you. For the scripture tells us that Jesus has the baptism of the Holy Ghost that will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. That's what God has. And he will give it to us. It says he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And we see this even before the throne of God in heaven, there is mingled with fire before the throne. A crystal a sea is before the throne. And it's mingled with fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomforted them. Uh, he discomforted who? Our enemies. But if you don't call on the Lord, and this is why Jesus said men ought to always pray and not faint. If you don't call on the Lord, you don't talk to him. You don't keep the conversation flowing with him. Then you don't, you're not asking him to help you. And the enemy wants you to stop praying. The enemy wants you to stop talking to God. The enemy wants you to stop trusting in the Lord. But I want you to know something. We have a God that you can trust. It says, then the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. God spoke and it began to rain in the days of Noah. And it rained until even the highest mountains were covered, and it bore up the ark of the of uh, of Noah with all the angels, all the animals that God was preserving uh, in the ark, along with Noah and his family. Uh, but God is the one that, at His word, He spoke. We know that the word of God is is swift. It's 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 uh, alive. It's quick and it's powerful. Uh, sharper than any two-edged sword. And we know that the word of God has control over the weather. We have people talk about climate change and all this stuff, but you better not leave God out. God is the one that has the control of the climate. God is the one that brings the heat in summer and the cold in winter. God is the one that brings the, the spring rains that waters the ground in the springtime. God is the one that, that takes the leaves and, and has the trees to shed their, their clothes in fall to get ready for winter. God is the one that does all these things. And through the falling of the leaves, he replenishes or fertilizes the ground so that it could bring forth fresh growth in the spring. It's God that does that. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. Water represents uh, situations. Uh, when it says waters, it represents situations, uh, things that would be dangerous. We find that when Jesus was going over to the other side with the boys and he was asleep in the boat and they, they shook him and said, Master, don't you care that we perish? And Jesus stood up and rebuked the wind and the sea. And there was a great calm. He said, Peace. Be still. That same Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, that same Jesus will rebuke the storms in your life. Whatever storm you're going through right now, he's able to speak, but he will speak when you ask him. When you come to him and you call upon him, he will answer you right speedily. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. Admit when things are too strong for you. Admit when folk are too strong for you. Admit when problems are too strong for you. But also 
along with your admitting of those things, also confess that God is stronger than your problems. Confess that God is stronger than your enemies. Confess that God is stronger than your circumstances and your situation. We look at Jesus' life here on earth. When you read in the Gospels, you will see that Jesus always mastered circumstances. Circumstances never mastered Jesus. No matter what the circumstance was, no matter what happened, when Jesus showed up on scene, things changed because he's the God that you can trust. So they prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. They hindered me. They did their best to keep me from being rescued, to keep me from prospering, but God stepped in and he was my stay. He was my help. He was the one that lifted me up out of the miry clay. He brought me forth also into a large place. God enlarged my possibilities. God enlarged my opportunities. God enlarged my blessings. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The man that that uh, uh, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law does he meditate day and night. He'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in the season. And whatever he does, he shall prosper. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. I'm thinking about what old brother Caleb said when he was when the children of Israel had gone out and spied out the land. And they were uh, the 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 ten came back with an evil report. But Caleb and Joshua wholly followed the Lord. They completely and totally followed the Lord. And Caleb said this to the children of Israel when they said, we can't do it. The, the, the folk there. Uh, the giants in the land, and we're like grasshoppers in their sight and all. But Caleb said, no, no, no. He said, no. If the Lord said, yeah, all this that you said, there are giants there, and they are walled cities there, and all of this. He said, but if the Lord delights in us, we are well able to take over the land. And so here the word is telling us about him delighting in us. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. And this is where God counts your faith as righteousness. He counts your faith in his word, your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your righteousness. The scripture says, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. And then David said, blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute sin. But then it lets us know that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the righteousness of God for us. He's the, his, his righteousness that's of the law was given to us. And so uh, he says, for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. In other words, even regardless of how much I might have fallen or failed or come short, in and of myself, but my heart was seeking to do right with God. And God counted it as if it had been done. Paul tells us in Romans, the seventh chapter says, uh, for with that, because of the fact that I, I will to do what is right, even though I'm not doing what's right, but I will to do what is right. I made the choice to do right. But he says that by me doing that, I consent that the law of God is holy. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I tried to do right by God. I admitted and I confessed that his word was true and that his law was righteous. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands in his eyesight. In other words, what Christ did on the cross, he took away my failures and my righteousness that was produced by me. And he replaced the righteousness that was produced by me with his righteousness that he produced that the father would accept. And because of that, it is not my righteousness that God sees, uh, but he sees the righteousness of Christ that has my name on it, that Christ has distributed to me by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
and because of my faith in him. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the froward, thou wilt show thyself froward. In other words, God's going to deal with you where you are, depending on where your heart is. But if you put your trust in God, you can know for a surety that he is the God you can trust. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks. God has no place for pride. The prideful look. The scripture said pride goes before a fall. And God has no pleasure in pride. But to the humble, Jesus said, whosoever will humble himself shall be exalted. But he that exalted himself shall be humble or made a base. For thou will light my candle. That means the candle represented my life. You will extend my life. You will give me life. Jesus said, I came that they will have life, that you would have it more abundantly. The Lord, my God, will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. All the successes in your life was because of the God that you can trust. All of your victories in your life is because of the God that you can trust. As for God, his way is perfect. The same David Look back in 19 Psalms, it says, the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. The way of the Lord is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. This test has been tested and it's never failed. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. In other words, he's a shield. He's a shield to all of those that trust in him. But who is God? Save the Lord or but the Lord. Who is or who is a rock? but our God. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh me my feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. In Philippians, the second chapter says, God who works in you both to will and to do. It is God that works in you both to will and to do. So we have to give him all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. He teaches my hand to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arm. The way the Christian wars is they get on their knees and they call out to the Lord and the Lord takes care of their situations. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand hath holden me up and thy gentleness has made me great. Thy gentleness, thy mercy, your grace, has made me grace. Promotion doesn't come from the east or from the south or from the west, but it comes from the Lord. He pulls down one and puts up another. I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. David, when he came back from Ziklag and found that the Amalekites had come in and burnt the city with fire and had taken away all of the families, the children, and all the possessions of David and his men. David inquired of the Lord his God and said, Shall I pursue and shall I overtake? And God answered, Pursue and you will overtake. And then God told him, said, And without fail, you shall recover all. That's the God that you can trust. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. They have fallen under my feet. Paul said, I, he, Paul told the church that he was believing that, that uh, Satan would be char shortly trampled under their feet. For thou hast girded me with strength unto the battle. Thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. We've been made more than conquerors through Christ Jesus that strengthens us. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them even unto the Lord, but he answered them not because they didn't live right. They, they were not his. They did not call upon him as being their God, the God that they could trust. And so he answered them not. Then did I beat them small as the dust before the wind. I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people, and thou hast made me the head of the heathen. heathen a people whom I have not known shall serve me. He said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves unto me. Let me tell you something. If you trust God, if you 
Put your trust in the God that you can trust. God will make even your enemies be at peace with you. He'll give you favor, even amongst those that previously were your enemies. The scripture says, if a man's ways please God, he'll make even his enemies be at peace with him. Strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of the close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. That's the praise we should have. That's the that's the the on our lips we should praise him and honor him and glorify him. Oh, and we should worship him. Oh, bless his name, because he is due worship in the beauty of holiness. It is God that avengeth me and subdueth the people under me. He delivered me from mine enemies. Yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto thy name. Jesus says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Great deliverance giveth he to his king and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David and to his seed forevermore. When we look at at the situation with David, uh, before David came to the throne, you had the Philistines southwest to the to the to the west and south of, of Israel. You had the Egyptians to the southwest of Israel, and uh, you had the uh, uh, to the east. You had the Assyrians and the Babylonians and the Hittites. You had all of those that God. For that time that David came to the throne, God shut down their power. God shut down their uh, advancement and made way for David was able to fulfill the promise of God from, as they say, from Beersheba to Dan. Israel expanded its its uh, borders and, and, for, and David put all of his enemies under his feet by the power of the God that he trusted in. And so as a result of this, we see that after David went off scene and Solomon came on scene and Solomon turned his heart away from God, they began to lose ground because he did not put his full trust in the God that he could trust. This is what God is telling us that we need to do. We need to put our trust in him. It's not in, in the president. It's not in the government. It's not in the Congress. It's not in the State House. It's not in the White House. It's not in the, uh, uh, the, the, the City Hall. But, and it's not in the bank. It's not in our careers and our jobs. It's not even in our relationships with our spouses and our children. But our trust should be in the Lord our God, the one and only who is able to lift us up above our enemies and to be able to secure our help in a time of need. Oh, bless his name. So this is what we need to do, saints. We need to look to the God who we can trust. Now, as I close, in the writer of Hebrews, in the 12th chapter, says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That's who we should look for. And if you're going to walk in faith, that trust means to walk in faith. You have faith in God. And when we have faith in God, we know that as the scripture says in that 11th chapter of Hebrews, if any man comes to God, he must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder unto those that diligently seek him. In other words, we must believe that God is a God that we can trust and we can put our faith in, in Jesus' name. Father, we just love you. We thank you for being the God that we can trust. And Father, we just ask that you make plain paths for our feet and open our eyes to the power of your anointing, to the power of your light, the light of your word, that we will be able to see the path that you have for us and walk by your light, even though darkness is all around, but we'll be able to see by your light, the light of our salvation. That's who you are. You are our light. You are our salvation, the God of our salvation. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Keep these, your people. Let your peace rule in our hearts, and to which also we are called 
and be let us be sanctified, set apart for your use. We ask this in Jesus' sweet name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Till next time, put your trust in the God that you can trust.